All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X 14 ARH7, all right? Model number's really tiny, but it's right there. Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X 14 ARH7. All right, so we're gonna be undoing all the screws on the bottom. These are T5 or Torx 5 screws, all right? I don't have my usual camera set up, so I, not, I need to keep standing up to take a look, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get everything. All right, you wanna keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put that flat side down like that. In the pattern, you remove them. So we got three here, we got two here. Actually, we only have three here and then two at the bottom. Okay. So let's go ahead and remove all these screws. Hopefully I'll be able to find my phone. It might be in my car somewhere, but... Oh no, all right. Let's go ahead and get these screws out. Last one here. Okay, now to get the bottom off, let's see. Most likely we'll use a suction cup, or I guess not. I guess you just pull it up like that. Also on the bottom, there's this little hole here that lets you um, do a kind of like a battery reset. So if for some reason your computer's just not turning on or something, you can try using a little needle or pin or folded out paper clip to press and hold that for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power. And sometimes that will get it to where the computer will start up again once you just plug it in and power it on. All right, I am cleaning up the dust from here. All right, so real quick. So there we go, clean that up. I'm gonna have to use my electric air blower to clean it better. Um, we're just going to take a quick look inside here. All right. Um, you got this big cable going from the USB 3 port, the power button, headphone jack, and the camera switch over to the motherboard, logic board. I believe it's going underneath on the other side of the motherboard. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and pull the battery out here just to be safe. We also need a thumbnail, so let's go ahead and center this thing and get a thumbnail. All right, and again, I don't have my usual setup, so I'm gonna be doing this kind of somewhat blind, so hopefully I'll get everything in view. Um, we're gonna switch over to a JIS-1 or J1 screwdriver, and we're gonna undo the screws holding the battery in place. Okay, again, keep the screws in order. We're also gonna undo the screws holding the speakers in place. Get that one out, get this one out. Okay, got another one for the battery over here. Okay, sorry, I'm keeping it zoomed out a bit because, um, again, I don't have my usual camera viewfinder thing set up. So if I zoom in and move stuff around, I'm not gonna be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, we're undoing, again, all the screws for the speakers as well. The speaker screws are wider and flatter. Okay, and then there's one more, or sorry, there's two more battery screws, one there and one here. Okay, now that we got all the battery screws out and the speaker screws, we're gonna carefully lift this up. Oh, there is the speaker cable connection here. Let me see if I can show that. So there's this flat cable here, and this is the kind where you get underneath and then you pop that up. Okay, so I get underneath with my fingernail. You can use like a thin tool but basically you get under and make sure you're not prying up the outer part of the connector. You're just only prying up the middle piece. So just like this and get underneath and it should pop out. Why is it being a pain? There we go. Okay, so just like that. And there's the speaker connection, right? It just pops back down. Um, you can use like a little tool like this to get underneath and then just pop it up or use the flat end and kind of get under and pop it up that way. All right, so let's go ahead and take the whole battery and speaker setup out. So we're just going to lift from the bottom here, grab everything together. All right, and we do need to raise the top ends. Okay, of course, the battery's still connected, so we need to swing this over. We got the connector here. What I like to do is grab as close as I can to the connector, and then we're going to wiggle it side to side, or I guess technically up, to, up and down, but not like vertically, like this way. Okay, so wiggle it and pull, and there we go. We've got the battery out, and the speakers can be removed. You just gotta undo that wiring, but I don't wanna have to undo and redo it, even though some of it came out I'm gonna have to do anyways. Here's the battery model number, L21C4PC4, all right? And then there's this also, but L21C4PC4. 
should be correct. If you order a battery, just make sure it looks the same. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Here you can see the touchpad trackpad connector here. Um, these have these little flip latches, so to remove them, you would flip that latch and then you can pull the cable out. I'm gonna leave that there. It looks like on some they have a extra thing here. I'm not sure what, why, but it's not soldered on that connector. Keyboard backlight connector, keyboard connector. Again, these all have those flip latches. Make sure you're careful. I use my fingernails because it's a lot easier to not damage things. People use like little mm, like pry tools and then they end up breaking these plastic things off and then, yeah. All right, there's another place where they had a debug thing but there's no connector there, LCD LVDS connector. If you're gonna mess with this, what you wanna do after disconnecting the battery, open up the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. Um, this will make it a lot safer to work on. Okay, so I'll let it keep going. I'll hold it for a few more seconds. All right, a few more seconds. All right. And then there's the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery there. We're not gonna mess with that. The LCD LVDS, now that I held the power button, we can safely flip that latch up and take that out if we need to. I'm just gonna take it out and put it back in um, because their display is not coming up. So just in case that that's causing some issues, sometimes it can be some dust causing it. So that, all right, we'll get this cable back in. And again, normally I would do this with it down on my desk and then having it zoomed in, but let me do this this way. Sorry, you, you just won't get a good view right now <laughs> until I find my other phone. But uh, there we go, get that in, latch that down. Okay, wireless card is here. If you need to remove the antennas, you go from the tail and you just pull straight up. I have videos showing that on other models, basically same thing. Uh, USB-C ports and this USB 3 port are all soldered to the motherboard here, so... Yeah, that's not like an easy replacement. If something goes wrong with those, they're pretty much gone. This has some junk all over it. That's because the thermal pads leave some greasy residue. You got this cable here going in, most likely for the touchscreen, possibly the camera and the microphone. Fan connectors have the same, like, lift from here and pry them up. Same thing, fan connector there. Okay. Uh, I don't really see too much else here. Uh, RAM appears to be soldered to the motherboard, so you can't really do anything with that. Let's pull the SSD out real quick. And then I'm just going to clean all the dust out. This is, again, using the JS1 or J1 screwdriver. Flip this up. And, yeah, you can see this cable is going underneath the motherboard logic board. All right, anyways, I'm going to put this back together. And I'm going to clean the dust off of it real quick. And then we're going to reassemble, and hopefully they have some luck with it waking up. Uh, maybe to be safe, I'm going to disconnect the CMOS BIOS battery as well. Okay. Uh, sometimes doing that, and then I'm going to short the two pins here. Um, sometimes draining that might fix it if it's a weird BIOS issue. Um, but we'll see. My customer is waiting outside, so I need to be somewhat quick here. Um, the keyboard looks like it is removable. There's screws holding this metal plate on top of the keyboard but you do need to take everything completely out so it's a real hassle and a pain and yeah all right i'm gonna clean the dust out and i'll be back see you guys in a bit all right i'm back so let's go ahead and reassemble we're gonna first reconnect this battery of course you do want to keep yourself grounded so static doesn't build up and then destroy your computer all right and let's go ahead and drop this into place get the speaker wires routed back in. I know it's kind of far and hard for you guys to see, but hopefully you get the idea. Line up these screw mounts here. Okay, get that back in as well. Okay, all lined up. Wireless card's a little bit in the way, so we actually have to tuck this side in first because this has to go underneath the wireless card. Either that or you have to pull the wireless card out. So keep that in mind. Okay. And it looks like it's gonna need a little assistance uh, having the rubber piece pulled over so it can go back in. 
go. Okay, so we got that in place. Let's go ahead now and get all the screws back in. Right, again, the flat ones for the speakers. <clears throat> don't forget to reconnect the speaker. So I'm going to do that now so I don't forget. Line that up, click that down. Good, all right. Make sure the CMOS BIOS battery is in if you took it out. Okay. I have a feeling the logic board is fried on this thing, which really sucks. A lot of these new computers now, I don't know why, but they just suddenly die out of nowhere. Okay. All right, we almost got all the screws back in. Make sure you don't smash the cables with the screws. Make sure you keep them out of the way. Okay. Okay, you can actually power it on uh, without um, putting the bottom cover on. I don't see a uh, bottom cover like open tamper um, switch all right so we're gonna get the battery connector back in line that up oh I probably should have put that back in first because now it's hard all right but there we go and then pinch it in so it goes in evenly you don't want to put the battery connector in crooked and then bend pins I'm gonna carefully open this up and push the power button and see if we have any luck power light is on I don't see any life on the screen um, we did pull the CMOS BIOS battery out, so sometimes it will take a while to start back up. So we'll give it a little bit, but it's looking like this thing is completely dead. Yeah, nothing is happening. Give it a little bit longer. Um, oh, one way I know it's dead. Oh, the caps lock and escape key lights were on uh, solid. So maybe that's just the BIOS resetting. Let's give it a little bit longer again. Caps lock light's not doing anything, so it's doing something. Maybe it's resetting the BIOS or maybe it's completely dead. We'll see. The caps lock and escape lights were on solid again and then they shut off. Hmm. Caps lock light's doing nothing. Give it a little more time. It might be doing a BIOS reset still, if we're lucky. Nope, these are solid again. And then they went off. Oh, <gasps> we got some life. We got life. Is it going to work completely? Or is it just that one flicker of giving us a tiny bit of hope and then dying? What just happened? Caps lock lights doing nothing. Okay, caps lock and escape keys are solid again. And I see it. Please stay on. Hopefully that's the last BIOS. It looks like it's working. We have life. We have life. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put this thing back together. Um, not 100% sure which thing fixed it. It might be the CMOS BIOS battery reset. Um, it's always a good idea to disconnect the main battery as well if you're doing that. So yeah, let's see here what happens. It looks like it's working. So I think we're good to go. We just got to put the bottom cover back on and that should be it. Hopefully it's not going to randomly go dead again. Um, but yeah. All right. So let's get this line back up centered. Make sure everything is reconnected Didn't leave anything out. Okay. We'll get this back on. So you want to put the bottom in first because it has those little hooks there. So go at an angle, kind of line it up, make sure to hook it all in. Okay, lower it down, and then you can kind of clip this stuff in. Hopefully, <laughs> why does it want to clip in? Okay, the clips on the side. So you got to push in as you push down to get those clips to go. And there we go. All right, let's get the 
T5, Torx 5 screws back in, and then we should be good. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it helped you um, save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for um, a living. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe. If you can't help out um, by uh, donating that way, it would help a lot. If you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well, because uh, that's what the algorithm likes to see. And also it'll help you learn more about how to work on these computers. Or you can watch some of my other videos. I do like random reviews of stuff and also show stuff around the house. So yeah, look out for my other videos and you can probably end up becoming the handyman of your house if you aren't already <laughs> or a handy woman. I don't know. Um, but yeah. All right. So let's get all these back in. And let's turn it on and restart the computer one last time just to make sure it's good. Okay. It's still on. We're just going to do a restart. Update and shut down, update and restart, three minutes. Well, you guys don't need to stay here for the restart. You see it's working. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.